Hello, welcome to chapter three, Emerging Business Ethics Issues. If you recall from reading the book in the chapter in some of the other uh, previous lectures, you are aware that ethical issues exist all over our organizations every single day. If you open a newspaper again, you're going to see ethical dilemmas related to businesses around the globe. So ethical issues involve a group, a problem, or an opportunity which may require some introspection and eventually investigation before a good decision can be made. So again, that introspection and that investigation is important to become aware of all the stakeholders or relevant groups issues in their views about it before you can make a good decision that is ethical that is legal that is moral and that obviously is sustainable for you for your organization for the relevant stakeholders the foundational values for identifying ethical issues could involve tr concepts like integrity and honesty. So integrity represents elements of virtue in unimpaired condition. Integrity relates to product quality, to open communication, to being transparent with all relevant stakeholders and obviously to your relationship with other stakeholders, other individuals, and people who are your employees, people who are your bosses, people who depend on you. So maintaining a good relationship requires a high level of integrity. In other words, doing what you say you would do and not breaking your promises. Honesty, on the other hand, is about truthfulness or trustworthiness. To tell the truth to the best of your knowledge without hiding anything. If you go back to history, you see that Confucius defined an honest person as Junzi, or a person who has the virtue of Rin. The person who has a virtue of Rin. So Rin basically means one who has humanity, a person who has humanity. Yi means what one should do according to the relationship with others. Li means good manners or respect in Confucianism. And Ji means whether a person knows what to say and what to do as it relates to the level of honesty that you represent in every conversation, in every relationship with other individuals, with stakeholders, with employees, with bosses and superiors. So the Confucian version of Immanuel Kant's golden rule is to treat your inferiors as you would want your superiors to treat you. Virtues such as familial honor and reputation for honesty are paramount to honesty or to being seen as an honest person. In here, in order to be honest, we need to look at the elements that defeat us from being honest. In other words, that violate the norms of honesty. And one of them could be lying. So what is lying? Generally, lying can represent being untruthful are making untruthful statements that result in damage or harm to other individuals. Lying can also be seen as white lies. See here, white lies is in quotations. So white lies which do not cause damage, but instead they function as excuses or a means of benefiting others. And finally, lying can also represent statements which are obviously meant to engage or entertain, but sometimes without malice or bad intentions. Another foundational value is fairness. To be a just person, to be equitable, to be impartial in your decision making. There are three elements uh, that motivate people to be just or fair or equitable or impartial. And that is equality, reciprocity, as well as optimization. 
Equality is basically the distribution of benefits and resources to others in any decision that you make. Reciprocity is interchange of giving and receiving in social relationships. And optimization is basically the trade-off between equity as well as efficiency in any transaction. That means the trade-off between equality as well as maximizing your productivity. So trade-off could be between equality and maximizing your productivity as an individual or your departments or your organization's overall productivity. Ethical issues in business can be inclusive of many, many issues. So let us talk about many of them that are presented in chapter three of the textbook for you. For example, misuse of company time and resources. Think about how often employees go to work, but instead of doing their work, they're spending computer time and company time using social media to talk to their friends, to their colleagues, or in some cases, basically to read issues that have nothing to do with their work. In other words, they're not getting new knowledge for their professional jobs, but they're basically reading stories that are irrelevant to their job or professional development. Abusive or even intimidating behavior could be an ethical issue in business. Actions such as physical threats, falsely accusing other people and yelling at other individuals. Meaning differs from person to person, obviously, when we are being abusive or intimidating, but nonetheless, there are certain behaviors that can be seen as intimidating or basically bullying others. So what is bullying? Bullying are those actions that create a hostile work environment. Workplace bullying is very, very strongly associated with sleep disturbances, as well as depression, fatigue, increased sick days, and even stomach problems that people suffer from. And unfortunately, there has been a few cases where constant and chronic bullying of a specific coworker might have led to suicide attempts as well. So bullying is an extremely destructive element of the workplace. So if you're a manager and you witness bullying, make sure you prevent it. Make sure you proactively stop it from happening again. There are various elements of lying. So as we mentioned a little bit earlier, lying means joking without any bad intentions or malice. There could be commission lying or omission lying. Commission lying is creating a perception or belief by words that intentionally deceive in a person or the receiver of the message. Omission lying is intentionally not informing others of any differences, problems, safety warnings, or negative issues that relate to the product or company that significantly affect awareness, intention, or behavior, or the outcome, or the decision of the other individual or the receiver. So there is a little bit of difference between commission lying and omission lying that you need to pay attention to and reflect upon. There could be conflict of interest issues in the workplace. For example, any individual can choose to either advance his or her own interest, or those of the organization, or those of some other third party. Bribery is another big issue in any business environment. So offering something, often money, in order to gain an illicit advantage from someone in authority. So illicit basically in this case means illegal or unfair to other individuals. So if you're offering a huge amount of money for somebody, that means other individuals who deserve the same outcome do not necessarily have the money to pay. So therefore, you are illegally or unfairly taking advantage of the process by offering this money to influence another person's behavior. 
So therefore, those who do not pay the bribe, unfortunately, they are disadvantaged. There are different forms of bribery. For example, active bribery represents when the person who promises or gives the bribe commits the offense. Active bribery is when the person who promises or gives the bribe commits the offense. Passive bribery is offense committed by an official who receives the bribe. So a government official who asks you for a certain amount of money before your paperwork can be completed, then that official is committing passive bribery. So passive bribery may not be an offense if the advantage was permitted or required by the written law or regulation of the foreign public officials country, including case laws. Obviously, you don't want to be accused of any form of bribery, which is whether it's active bribery or passive bribery. Sometimes there are requirements of small facilitation payments when we are dealing with officials in a country that require small payments before the work can get done. So in other words, it might be a mandatory or a necessity of getting business done in those offices. So the small facilitation payments are payments made to obtain or retain business or other improper advantages. They do not necessarily constitute bribery payments for U.S. companies in certain situations, but not all. So American business owners and agents, when they're dealing with foreign firms, they have to be very careful because in the U.S. we have the Foreign Business Corrupt Practices Act, which basically makes it illegal to bribe foreign officials. However, sometimes if you're paying, let's say, $10 for an office worker to take two hours off in order to complete your work by going to another office so they can get a stamp, let's say, that might be facilitating payment, which is not a huge amount of money, but it basically is required for that person to take time off, which means he or she may not get paid. Therefore, if the person has taken the time off to get your work done, you should compensate that person for his or her time away from their office. So small facilitation payments are often made to induce public officials to perform their duties or their jobs or their functions. However, these small facilitation payments can be illegal, so you have to be very careful in some countries. Uh, obviously, totally make it illegal like the United Kingdom. Corporate intelligence is another ethical issue. So corporate intelligence represents collection and analysis of information on markets, technologies, customers, and competitors, as well as on socioeconomic and external political trends. There are three types of corporate intelligence. So there's the passive monitoring system for early warning, there's a technical field support, and then there's support dedicated to top management strategies. So good luck being ethical in all cases. Remember, ethical behavior is a skill. You need to please evaluate and improve your ethical muscles every single day. Good luck.